I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Juan? Well, today, a Democracy Now! Global Broadcast exclusive interview with Emily Henekowitz, who you may remember her name. She's a 21-year-old American art student who lost her eye in May after being shot in the face by an Israeli tear gas canister. Emily is entering her senior year at Cooper Union's prestigious art program here in New York City. This past spring, she chose to study abroad in Israel at a leading art school in Jerusalem. Emily holds Israeli citizenship. Her father was born in Israel, and her grandparents are Holocaust survivors. Soon after she arrived in Israel, Emily began spending time in East Jerusalem and the West Bank, and many of her drawings began to reflect the harsh realities of Palestinian life in the occupied territories. On May 31st, news broke that Israeli commandos had attacked a Gaza-bound aid flotilla in the Mediterranean and killed nine activists on board. Emily decided to take part in a protest against the Israeli assault, and she joined demonstrators at the Kalandia checkpoint in the West Bank. Israeli border police began firing tear gas canisters at the protesters. One of them hit Emily in the face and blasted her left eye out of her head. Several bones in her face were crushed. She was rushed to the hospital, but her eye could not be saved. The Israeli Defense Ministry said, well, according to preliminary checks, the border police dealt lawfully with the protest and that the firing of tear gas was justified. But witnesses and a Haaretz journalist who was there said Israeli forces fired directly at the demonstrators, rather than into the air, in accordance with regulations. The Israeli police have begun a criminal investigation. Meanwhile, Emily's back here in the United States, recovering from her injuries, but her left eye is gone forever. Uh, last week, Israel refused to pay her medical bills of $3,700 for the treatment she received at the hospital in Jerusalem. The government claimed she was not intentionally shot and said she'd endangered herself by participating in the demonstration. Well, Emily Hanakowitz is now here in New York, getting ready to enter her senior year at Cooper Union, not far from our studios. And she joins us here in our studio for her first broadcast interview. Welcome, Emily, to Hi. Democracy Now! S let's go back in time. How you ended up in Israel? Um, well, you know, it's just like any um, junior in college wanting to go on an exchange program. Um, and I really liked the program that Betzalel had, and I went for that reason. It really wasn't for any kind of political reason that I ended up there. <laughs> and so what happened when you got to school there? Um, well, the problem is they gave us three weeks off for Pesach, um, which is just enough time to really go around and not just read about what's going on with the settlers and the wall and all these things, but to actually go out there and see it. And I just opened my eyes and started getting involved. Uh, and you, you started getting involved in, uh, in protest movements or in support movements for the Palestinians? What, what exactly? How did you get involved? Um, yeah, so it's sort of a mixture. I mean, I had gone to a number of demonstrations. Um, um, at very uh, at places where like like at a Nabi Sala where they um, they're trying to get their water supply back and every week they have a demonstration um, where they try to go to their well and then there's uh, you know Berlin with the wall and um, I spent a lot of time in Sheikh Jarrah um, because uh, well, I've joined the ISM and they have a tent there that they um, they keep someone in the tent. 24 hours a day to kind of check to make sure that the um, uh, settlers at the outpost don't do anything crazy, and if they do, that there's international witnesses there to um, document at least. Um, so. Sheikh Jarrah is in East Jerusalem. Yeah. You were drawing pictures there? Um, I mean, I guess. I mean, I, I draw pictures kind of everywhere. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I uh, I definitely sketched a lot when I was there. Um, By the way, we're going to show uh, <laughs> some of your uh, pictures, and we're going to post them on our website at democracynow.org. Okay, great. <laughs> By the way, Thirsty Pixels, your blog. Yeah. Why do you call it Thirsty Pixels? Um, because what kills computers keeps us alive. And how do Thirsty Pixels kill computers? Because water kills a computer. That's 
but these pixels, they want water, that's why. <laughs> so talk about your evolution then. Uh, you're in Sheikh Jarrah, you're seeing things. Yeah. Now, where you come from? Your parents or your grandparents were Holocaust survivors? Mm -hmm. I, and, and your father, an Israeli citizen? Yeah. They went from where were they in concentration? Did they were they in concentration camps? No, they were in concentration camps. My my grandparents um, they were from Poland and they um, I don't know the full story, but I do know that they were all around Europe trying to find a place where they could just live and that there was no place where they could really be and they were really ardent Zionists and they came to Israel um, lived there for ten years. And your dad born there. Mm -hmm. And in terms of your transformation, as your, your father was here in, in the United States, uh, was he aware, were you communicating with him while you were there, of the, how you were changing your perspective or viewpoints of what was going on in Israel and the, and the occupied territories? Um, you know, I found it very difficult at first to tell my parents that I had been to the West Bank and that, you know, that I'm drinking tea with Palestinians. Um, but. Of course, I had to tell him, but it took me like a month to really get to it. And my 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 dad reacted, you know, like a concerned father, but also felt that somehow I was personally attacking him <laughs> by, uh, you know, going going to all these things. But he he came around really. So, um. well, we're gonna break and then come back and find out how he came around. And also, <laughs> here you are protesting at check. Points, and your grandfather actually was a border guard many years ago. But we'll ask you about that after break. This is Democracy Now! We're talking to Emily Hanakowitz, 21-year-old art student here in New York. Cooper Union lost her eye in May when she was in the West Bank protesting the Israeli commando attack on the Gaza aid flotilla. Back in a minute. Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Our exclusive this hour, our broadcast exclusive, is an interview today with Emily Hanakowitz, 21-year-old art student here in New York at the prestigious Cooper Union. Uh, she lost her eye in May after being shot in the face by an Israeli tear gas canister. Um, Emily, uh, before we go to that moment, your grandfather was a border guard? Um, yeah, I don't know very much more about that, but I do know that he was a border policeman when he was in uh, Israel. So talk about May 31st, 2010. Where were you? Um, I had stayed at the ISM apartment in Ramallah. And, uh, That's the International Solidarity Movement. Yeah, the movement. International Solidarity Movement. Um, and I got a call that morning. And of course, the numbers were completely inflated that morning. Like 21 people were killed on the flotilla, or whatever. But uh, basically, there was going to be a demonstration starting in Ramallah, and we we're all going to hold all these flags from all the different countries that people had um, represented from the flotilla. 